I'm here, I'll wait just a couple minutes to make sure that those who are looking to find us can join us. Hello, Jody. And Max and Marin. And another Jody. For some people who are going to join tonight, this is the first time that they've done this. So this will be, uh, we'll give them a, another minute or two to make sure the technology is uh, working. Please go ahead and leave some comments. Say hello to one another. Hello, Dave. Hello, Colleen. Hello, Scott. Hello, Bill. Hi, Jan and Patty. And Eric and Bonnie. This is a nice roll call. Hi, Deb. And Denise, you made it. And Vicky's there too. <laughs> we are going to celebrate the, the sacrament of the Lord's Supper tonight. So if you don't have your bread and your uh, cup ready, please go ahead and get that and bring that to the table or wherever you're, you're seated uh, for worship tonight. We'll give you a couple minutes to do that and, and bring that forward. Hello, Lewis, Lewis. Hello, Lewis family, McKillops, and Janet Goldberg watching from Florida. Normally on Monday, Thursday, we, one well, of the last few years, we've had our potluck meal around the table, and then we have gathered and uh, um, had our communion at table. So we uh, have this tradition of gathering at table, and we'll do that tonight even though we are in separate places. Hello, Clara. Hello, Diefenbachers. How are you? It would be wonderful to see all your faces, but I'm lifted just by seeing your names scroll by me here. This is wonderful. A reminder that tomorrow at noon, I'll be reviewing a Good Friday service, Stations of the Cross, reviewing some of the meditations for each station. It'll last about a half hour or so. And uh, you are invited to participate with me also here on Facebook Live. And then Sunday at 10 o'clock, we'll have our worship service on Facebook Live. It'll later be available on YouTube. And a, a link will be posted on the church's website. We hope to have the organ and some special music and uh, good activity for our Easter service. So we hope that you will join us for that. We'll go ahead and get started, and hopefully others will join us. I see Sharon and Denise have joined, and welcome. We're glad to have you with us tonight. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for your presence with us as we gather together in our own separate places. We gather as those disciples did long ago to enjoy our fellowship and friendship, to be close to Jesus in this hour, to be with him in a time of worry and uncertainty. We gather tonight to be with him and to be with each other as Jesus shares his love and his spirit. We pray that you will speak to our hearts. We pray that you will strengthen us for the tests that lie ahead for all of us. In our gathering, remind us of the hope the hope that comes when darkness and death are redeemed by your light and the power of Jesus' resurrection. Be with us now in this hour of worship and remembrance, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight I'll be reading from the Gospel of Luke from the 22nd chapter. And the first reading is verses 1 through 23. 
really the uh, story of the Lord's Supper. Now the festival of unleavened bread, which is called the Passover, was near. The chief priests and scribes were looking for a way to put Jesus to death, for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered into Judas, called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers of the temple police about how they might betray him to them. They were greatly pleased and agreed to give him money, so he consented and began to look for an opportunity to betray him to them when no crowd was present. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had, been, had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us, that we may eat it. They asked him, Where do you want us to make preparations for it? Listen, he said to them, When you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him unto the house he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks you, Where is the guest room that I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour came, he took his place at table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of heaven. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he said, Take this, divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and that when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another which one of them it would be who would do this. We will now celebrate that moment of Jesus with his disciples, enjoying the Passover together, sharing of the bread and of the cup. At this table, we know that Jesus is with us. We may be in separate places, but we are together in his spirit and in his name. Just as the people of God found God in remembering their journey from bondage to freedom and Passover, just as Jesus was with his disciples in that upper room, so he is with us here now in this moment. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you. Receive the blood that he shed for you. Do these things in remembrance that he died for us. Feed on him in your hearts with thanksgiving, and until the kingdom of God comes in all of its fullness, let us celebrate this feast. This is the table of Jesus the Christ. Each and every one of you are welcome here. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has given to us a new and living way with Jesus Christ our Lord, grant to all who eat this bread and drink of this cup, that our hearts and our lives may be truly open to the influence of your Spirit. Now, in accordance with the Holy Sacrament, in remembrance of Jesus, we commemorate our Lord's Last Supper with his disciples, the offering of himself and the sacrifice of the cross. Bring your Spirit upon us, God, and sanctify this bread and cup which we now set aside for sacred use. May they become symbols of the body that was broken for us and of the blood that was shed for us. And may our participation in this meal bring us to repentance, to renewed faith, to greater comfort for our lives. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. When the time had come for Jesus to be lifted up, when all had been prepared, he shared his last meal with his disciples. He took a loaf. He gave thanks. He blessed it. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples and he said, when you eat of this bread, remember me. This is my body broken for you. 
ministering to you in Jesus' name, I offer you now this bread, symbol of Jesus' body. Please serve those who are with you and eat of this bread together. This is the body of Christ broken for you. And when their meal was finished, Jesus took the cup, he blessed it, he gave it to his disciples. He asked them to recall the story of Passover and the promise that God had made with the people of Israel. And he said, in this cup is a new promise that I am about to make with each of you. This is my blood shed for you. When you drink of it, remember me. Ministering to you now in Jesus' name, I offer you this cup symbol of Jesus' blood shed for us, of God's promise poured upon us this night. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for giving us this sacred meal for giving us your presence on this night of remembrance, for giving us your life through Jesus the Christ. We pray that we might be nourished by what we have received. We pray that we might be inspired and energized for what we have received. We thank you for reminding us of your everlasting grace celebrated for all of eternity. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Our second section of scripture from the 22nd chapter of Luke begins with the 39th verse and continues on with the story of what happened to Jesus after he left that room. He went out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not by my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength, and in his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to his disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping. Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike them with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else, on seeing him, said, You're also one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you're talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, 
Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. I was looking over some of the prayers and liturgy that we've used uh, in Monday, Thursday services before. We traditionally have closed with the passage from Luke in which we intersect the nativity narrative with the narrative of Calvary. And Frank Maynard and Lisa Berry do such an outstanding job and we truly miss that tonight. But I also found that I traditionally use a prayer for Monday, Thursday, and these words are included in that prayer. We know that this is not a day of safe distances. And I thought how ironic it is that we talk about safe distances on this night when we are all safe at home, when we are all practicing social distancing, when we are all doing what we can to be separated from one another. On that night, as Jesus went to pray with his disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane, they tried to keep a distance. He went away to pray. They stayed at a separate place and fell asleep. That night in the courtyard, Peter was at least brave enough to follow Jesus into Jerusalem. The rest of the disciples were afraid and were hanging out someplace where they could not be found. Peter was there, but he too kept at a safe distance. Tonight we're in our homes and in different places, some across the country, but yet we are here to remember that this is not a night to be at a safe distance when it comes to following Jesus the Christ, when it comes to being people of faith. We might prefer that we can keep a safe distance these days. We might prefer that our lives be easier. We might prefer that we did not have to live through the kind of situation we face tonight. We may not want to hear of the, the illness and the death. We may not want to be isolated. We may not want to be alone. We may not want to live in fear of what tomorrow will be like. This is a night of death and darkness we might prefer the cup to be removed from us. Jesus that night prayed that same thing. God, if there's any way this could be different, please make it so. But yet he followed. He trusted. He lived in faith, even to the cross. Jesus believed that God would act in such a way that whatever it was that would happen would be redeemed. It would be made to find hope. It would be saved and made to be meaningful. Tonight, we trust as Jesus trusted in the garden. We may not know what is ahead of us, but we know that God will be with us. And if we trust in God, and live in our faith, that will be redeemed and hope will be before us. No matter what will be, God will be with us and God's love will sustain us and remind us of our importance. Amen. Let us join together now for a time of pastoral prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we again are grateful for this chance to be together tonight. Even in distant places, we are together in your spirit, remembering Jesus last night with his disciples, remembering his agonizing prayer in the garden. We too are in a garden spot. We feel vulnerable, we feel isolated, we feel as if we do not know what might come next. We prefer that things would be easier. We prefer that our faith would not have to be tested. Help us, O oh God, to watch, to pray, to stand with Jesus in hope, to trust that you will make out of fear and uncertainty and vulnerability a path in which your way might grow and each of us can grow stronger. We pray tonight for those who are ill, for those who need your healing. 
We pray for those who have suffered a loss of a loved one, a friend or family member from the virus, that you would be there to provide them with comfort and consolation. We pray for the doctors and nurses and healthcare workers who are on the job, working countless hours, offering all of their strength and courage each and every day. We pray for their health. We pray for their energy and their spirit. We pray for those who are isolated tonight, for those who may be lonely and afraid. Let them know of our thoughts and our prayers. Let them know our hearts are with them in this hour. We pray for those who are without work, for those who are facing financial difficulty in these changing times. We pray for our families, for parents with children who are having to make sacrifices, who are having to deal with uncomfortable situations at home. We pray for patience and energy and wisdom. Oh God, we pray for an end to this virus. We pray a blessing upon those who are working around the clock to seek remedies, to seek a vaccine. We pray for our leaders in the national and the state and local levels, those who have to make decisions that affect us all. We pray for our church and for our church leaders. Grateful for the fellowship that we find there, O oh God, we ask that you continue to remind us that we are the church, even though we are not together, even though we may not gather in one building, we are the church, we are your body in our words and in our service. Help us to be kind and compassionate. Help us to find places to be your presence in our world this day. On this Monday, Thursday, as we contemplate Jesus' journey to Calvary tomorrow, help us to hope, help us to love, help us to care. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, I'm so grateful as I see these names go by of all of you who are watching from many, many places. Grateful that you could be with us tonight. I pray for each and every one of you. Be safe and be well. Uh, remember tomorrow at noon, we'll be doing some Good Friday meditations. And our Easter services will be at 10 o'clock Sunday. Look forward to having you there. And you better be singing in your homes the Easter songs because uh, I want to be able to hear you while I'm at Meadowbrook. So thank you so much for joining me tonight. I love you all. I miss you all. And I look forward to the time in which we can all be together again. May the love of God and the peace and strength of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, be with us as we leave this upper room, as we journey to garden, as we prepare to walk with Jesus to Calvary. God be with us. Amen. May God bless you. Good night.